So I am at Berry Hill Fisheries Main Lake on the last knockings of the Xander fishery, possibly in the south of England. Undoubtedly the best Xander place you'll find in the south of England. I'm late, it's 4.30, it's really late, it turned into a bit of a nightmare. But at this time of year, you're allowed to fish a couple of hours into dusk. Um, I'm trying, honestly, I'm trying my catfish floats, I'm calling them, that light up at night. I've got one out there I've cast out using some small roach dead baits. I'll show you what, you can buy them here. I mean, it's always worth getting them anyway because look, it's a big pack there for about four pounds or something like that. Four pound fifty, four pound fifty. Then it'd be five pound next week, six pound. You know what, it's like the inflation now. But anyhow, 450, a load of baits there. I've got a seafood bait out as well, which I've asked about, has anybody ever caught on this seafood bait? They don't think so. This is Xander, I'm talking only, only here for Xander. No overnight carp fishing now, that's done. No, that's all gone. So, on the left hand rod I've got here, regular washing up bottle top for the bobbin. And I've cast my seafood bait down, so you won't see that moorhen over there, just out from that tree. I've whacked it down there with a SSG or a swan shot on there. And just to see, look, it's probably a blank, it's probably nothing. There's no ground bait, there's just this one bait sitting down there. And I've no idea whether Xander will eat these things or not, but you know, we'll find out later on. The dead baits, they will definitely eat. I used to use them a bit bigger than this, but, and they just cut them in half. So really think, wow, they're really small baits. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's better than having a bigger bait and cutting in half, I feel. Would that not look more natural like that? Barbless hook, which has to be. Wire trays, get your wire traces here in the little shop. And I've got that about 30 inches deep with my float here that should light up on contact with water. It's got two little spikes. I'll bend the spikes out. I don't know what I'm supposed to. Nobody, nobody sort of told me yet what to do with them. But they, as far as I can, are brilliant. Now, I'm just having a look around my float I cast out here. It's, it's going this way slowly, so there must be some form of undertow there. I might have to go a little bit deeper with it. So it's just bumping along the bottom. Probably won't get anything till it's dark. So I'm going to fish two float rods, and this one is over on the bottom. Just using my carp reels and the lighter carp rod, because look, Sander aren't the world's most epic fighters. But you know, it's just a nice fish to catch, and there's not many places short of going miles up the River Severn, maybe. Um, I think there's some way up on the Thames, some of the old ones, and of course, Norfolk Boards, where they used to be 30 40 years ago, I think it was. That used to be the spot. So, in here, they're in here. They go from about three up into double figures. I don't think I've maybe I've had one double, I don't think I've had a big double, definitely, but I think they go to about 13 in there, so a big fish. Going to pop this one out there and just let it drift around. It's virtually sort of free line. The wind is coming right to left, southwesterly airflow. Nice and mild. They say that the Xander don't like the cold. <laughs> I think I must be part Xander. So I don't really need the bot buzzers there, to be, to be perfectly honest, because once it gets... That's, that's lit up already, that one. That one's lit up. I'm not sure about the one around here. I might cast him out again, this one. He's dragged round. I don't think I've bent open the... Uh... Let's have a look at it. I didn't quite bend them open. Generally, I just catch light ledgering or free lining on the bottom. Distance isn't a problem here. They come in really close. Under trees are good. I might be in the wrong place. I don't know because as I do this, the actual Berry Hill, uh, Berry Fishery Xander season, as it were, the October the 1st is only just opened. And while it's daylight and there's lots of leaves, I will put these on. So we need to back up. Down here I'm on the on the bait runner there. 
got it quite, I need to go a bit light, I won't be carp fishing again overnight, up this uh, side of the winter. I've got my brolly up because there's an airflow here. So basically I can sit. I can see one float there, one float there. I've got my bob in here, I'm all set up. Matt's over here, the net is on the secret angle, about 30 degrees facing the fish. So people, I think, uh, wish me luck on possibly my last sand trip of berry fisheries. Obviously, I want to catch one. That's what I've come for. I'm set up for Xander and nothing else. I think I might have one small pike here. Um, but it is Xander you come for. The limited amount of fish I've had, I would say, dusk into the first couple of hours of darkness. I don't know whether they go all night. A lot of species don't go all night, you know, it's at dusk. So uh, I'm going to have something to eat, flask of tea, see if that will kick something off. Beautiful setting, it's such a shame, you know, that it is, uh, as I speak, being sold. And possibly, uh, I think, you would never see another one like it. I don't honestly think you'll see an estate lake like this, with the quality of fishing here, in the surroundings. I think anybody who fishes here would agree, we have all been very, very fortunate to be able to fish it. Otherwise, it's all sort of secret, squirrel stuff, friends of the committee and all that business. It's the old boys club, the greasy pole as they call it, which unfortunately I'm not in, it's probably a good thing, my opinions, <laughs> dear. But this is a fantastic spot. I'm actually holding back two really good overnight carp um, sessions I had here in September before they uh, closed it down. Really enjoyed it, had some really good fish. One of the, I had my best of a carp session here for big fish, definitely. So that's going up, and hopefully I'll be able to put up some of the record fish that's come out here as well. Over the years. All quiet on the western front at present. So as we do this, we're coming into the predator season here in the UK. So you've got little fish like this, and a lot of places are barbless hooks. Now this is, a, I think, a size 6 barbless. A crimp, they're not my traces, these are the shop ones. Uh, a crimp wire trace there, about... 12 15 inches long crimp to a swivel and there's my main line and there's my electric waggler oriental asian type float locked either side with a couple of pb but this look watch that's how easily it comes off so what you want to do is cut yourself a little piece of rubber band just like that if you can see that there if i can do this film and i will do and I do this for pike fishing, especially twitching baits. Primarily with barbless. There you go. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Just there is the rubber band. That will stop look, the bait coming off. Push it around the bend. So when you cast out, especially at night, and you think, that splash didn't sound right. There's two splashes. Well, one will be the float. The other will be the bait flying off. And if they're too far apart, in other words, the float's got to hit here. Bait's going to hit there, so you know whichever is the uh, first or second splash, the next one will be about 30 inches away. If it's further than that in the dark, chances are the bait's off and you're actually fishing with a bare hook. So bear that in mind. You don't want one hitting out there 10 yards and then 20 yards away, another splash, because that means your bait's flowing off. Now, what I'm going to do is fish this one a little bit deeper now, because they do tend to be dragging around. And I just alter the depths. It's not particularly deep here being in a state lake. And I can rotate these two as this one drifts round with a belly of line or undertow. Even though the wind's going that way, the floats I want to drag here. So I can probably cast them a little bit left. move this one into there and that one into there well somebody had a carp over there it wasn't a sand that'd be a monster sand but it, you, you know, low double maybe something like that eight nine ten twelve pounds who knows I wanted to show you about these I showed them on our um, 
film about two films ago because it's getting dusk now I thought I'd show them you know lit up now they've got the little catch here I showed them before for going around rod, rod tops but I'm wondering could that diamond to be the same to put it on top of a waggler float and just snap it around a waggler float but it has got battery in it so it's it's got weight to it it might upset the balance of the float but to get them lit and working it says they're all waterproof it has this battery in here Ooh, I can't even get it out but if you push that in the battery in it makes a contact there you go you should be able to see that and then screw it straight back in here like this and there is either a float an attractant if you're ledgering uh, definitely got some uses night fishing oh, he's a noisy one and I'm wondering if we could go around a waggler float or even because it clips there could that clip on the line and act as a bobbin I know you've got your buzzers there as well but you know that it's about the right weight for a bobbin I feel as well just another one of those gizmo gadgets guys that you might find a use for beach fishing barbell fishing at night you know when you're looking for the rod top to pull round I'll tell you what, you're not going to miss that moving, are you? If that's your rod top. Now switch it off. Just pull it, break the contact. If you can. There you go, like that, it's off. Could be another little handy gadget for your fishing armoury. I could do with a handy gadget. It's called a sand. Dropped it. Definitely a pickup. Yeah, he's had it off. Now I don't know whether that was a carp or a zander, but it was on the seafood. Uh, oh my god, I could have been a pike guy, sir. I mean, I didn't feel any contact at all. I should think that must have been a crayfish. Oh, strong enough. Oh well, I think another trace. No, that's the plastic. I can feel it now. That's the plastic covering. Oh, what the heck was that? I just struck at what I thought was a crayfish and it's a fish. Fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God, it's a small sander on a seafood.
Well, God, here. That's a turn up for the books, because that's the first fish. That's sand, let's put that back for you. That I've ever caught on anything other than a fish bait. That's a nice looker. Pleased with that. First sand of the season, probably. Hopefully it's not the last, we've got a couple of hours left yet before it gets dark. You know, get over here to Berry Hill where you can. Or Berry Fisheries Main Lake. Up to the end of October, I believe, but do phone in, check. And you might get one of these toothy critters. Well, I'm surprised because I thought that was a great fish. I lost one early on, and that was obviously a sounder as well. So other, other than dead baits. Yes, I've learned something. <coughs> Yeah, I think some other guys just turned up for uh, a couple of hours sander fishing as well in the evening, into the darkness. I don't recall them being there before, so let's have a look. I mean, maybe wrong, but they've been there all the time and they're packing up. The other gentleman next to me, he's packed up. The other gentleman's still over the, the back there, and I think there was another guy there in distance, so, you know, I imagine all going to go on the Xander, I guess. Now, he must have been there all the time, that guy, and I didn't see him, and he's packing up. I've got the seafood bait on too now, got it out on the float. I might actually ledge a two of just float fish with the one. Dare I give it a tweak? Well, I'm pretty sure that might have been a bite. But you can see how bright the float is there. The other float's playing up, the Asian float. So that other one I showed you, I've done that with it. <laughs> Gives me a glowing face. So I just clipped it and put the shot either side of it. And I wonder if that might attract a Xander as well. And I'll put the seafood bait on that one. The other one I can see easily, I'll show you in a minute, because it's pretty well dust now. Throw this one out and uh, see what happens. Wait events. It's got fish on the seafood, boys. That is ridiculous. And the other plate went. Oh no, the other plate's gone. Missed it. I was talking to one of the one of the bailiffs there. I was just talking to one of the bailiffs. I pulled it up a bit for you. I mustn't mess around fishing like this. Keep moving. Let me get this first. Nearly pitch black. Talking to the bailiff and the float went away. There we go. That's what you come to bury for. About the same size. I wish I could tell you what the bait was, but then I'd have to shoot you. What a 
think actually people, it might actually be a tad bigger. Map time. Check those those teeth out. I can't I'm sort of shocked that I'm catching them on this seafood bait. I really am a little bit shocked. But a nice fish. Just a different species of catch. It's just where else do we go to catch them now, guys? Where do we go to get Xander like this? Still water, day ticket. I don't know any, really, you? Let's get it back, because I had a miss take on that to float while the bailiff was here. Well, the geese are pretty noisy tonight. So I missed one on that. Let's get it out again. Bailiff going up the road with his buggy. There's quite a few guys out on the it's a wet and mild southwesterly airflow. There's quite a few on the um, Temple Lake, which is a specimen one. I think they got them to over 40 pounds of carp in there. One more sound would be nicer. That and the geese chatting up. Well, that's like 25 yards away. Obviously, the one on the right is the Asian one, and I, I thought that was way, way brighter. And it turns out the one on the left is even brighter still. I've yet to have a take on it. You can see it's absolutely uh, no mistake in it. You can't miss it. It moves three or four inches, it gets pulled under. I'm just the, the reason I got that one is because I think that's laying on its side, so it's putting light out under the water. So will that, in fact, you know, attract, attract a zander? Because they'll feed in the dark. Go across to this one. And the camera obviously won't focus because it thinks uh, the black of the night surrounding it is what I want to focus on. It's not. It's probably got an independent focus unit, uh, but I can't find it, especially in the dark. Shut up! Has anybody got a shotgun? Fancy living here. Wow, well, guys, I'll tell you. I'm glad I'm not car fishing all night, if that's what it's going to be like. Don't they ever give it a rest? I mean, I can't understand what that... Why would a Xander take a seafood bait that's sort of juicy and gunky? I'm wondering, to be honest, if it's the smell factor there. Because it's coloured and it's so dark anyway, but I mean, there might be some quite, quite a bit of smell in it, you know? So that's one, two, three takes on seafood, one on what we call a natural dead bait, the roach. Which, which I missed. So it's dark here now, bats whizzing around, I just hope it has rain. Probably got about an hour and a half. I see the lights come on over the other bank there, so I'm guessing somebody's fighting a fish over there. I don't know if it would be a carp or a zander. I think most people would be here for the zander. Well. Look at that light. Look at this, look. It's fallen off. The camera broken. <laughs> a strobe effect. <laughs> There's nobody epileptic out there. It's got to be the battery guy. I better turn it up the other way. So, nothing else. <laughs> nothing else happening at the moment. Honestly, the ultimate YouTube channel. <laughs> the biggest views. Come on, you 
naughty boy. There it is. Awesome. That's better. Got some huge views on the channel. <laughs> I've got the rubbish, the most rubbish cameras in the whole of YouTube. And we still get films, still get a bit of footage, but it is what it is. I keep hearing this guy casting. Boom! Boom! I think he's at the back of the island. How many times does he want to make the right cast? And of course now I realise, Graham, it's the acorns dropping off the trees on the island that are hitting the game. Boom! Because obviously. The trees might be 80 feet tall, and then they're up on the island, so it makes quite a noise going in. It appears I am the only person fishing on the whole of the main lake. I don't think, I think the other guys, it's an acorn now. I don't think it's anybody else fishing, so I've got about an hour and a half of solitude. Oh my God, what's that noise? No, don't lure them out, Graham. Peace and solitude, thank goodness for that. Be nice to have a quiet hour. I want to hear one thing. Beep, 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 beep. That's all I want to hear. Come on, one more sound. Bailiff did say that they're not going crazy like they have done other years. So I'm happy with two, but I would like three. All fishermen do. This is what it's like on an estate lake. You're going to get planes because it's near Gatwick. But generally, middle of the night, you know, when I used to carp fish here, one till four or five to when the planes start again, can be really, really nice. I don't hear any bite alarms going off over Temple. Maybe it's quiet there as well. I want to move that float. Well, it's weird because I've got up and down three times now. One was talking to the bailiff and the float went nothing. I didn't even get to strike or anything like that. It was down, held the float down, popped up. Is it crayfish? Is it crayfish just pulling on, on the bait? I don't know. It's weird. It's a bit weird. Funny night. They're not feeding right tonight. Definitely not feeding right. So we've got. Seafood to the left, seafood to the right, and out in the middle, my roach. See, I don't know if the recast, that's a thing. Sort of know so little about Xander really, you just go and catch them. But the actual knowledge about them, I don't really know. I know the other fish, obviously. I'm looking at the float now, it's weird. I'm in the front, boom, right under like that. Held it under, sorted the camera out, switched the camera on, let's say 10 seconds, 12 seconds. Look round, floats up. Definitely, definitely seems a funny night. Nice, got a fish on. Didn't straight away this time. I could have brought it, I could have let it, it came off, it looked about the same size. But those ones that, uh, it doesn't surprise me that one came off guys, because the other ones, I've got it in here. The other ones just spat it out, so they're taking really, really finicky. If I had the net there, I could have netted that one, but I was messing about too much really. Not to worry, just going to show you, you've got to hit them straight away. I think if I had a pause, it would just spat the bait again. Fish about, I don't know, four pounds he looked. Well, what is uh, nice to know, I was, wasn't altogether sure whether they, slippery little things, are they? Whether they would be 
carp, because I have had carp on half sections. I've missed another one on the inside here, on, on the seafood, so I'm going to just, just try one more cast to the same spot. It makes you wonder whether it's the same fish or whether it's different fish each time. Moving in and out the swim. So don't forget that little piece of band that just holds a bait on that. Like that. See if we can get it out, see if we get lucky again. Again boys, static dead bait. This time, let's get organized. Might be, might be a tad bigger this one. Put the camera on, let's move it. Ah, pinged off. Pinged off another one, I think it's about four or five pounds. I've noticed when they come up on the surface like that, thrashing around, that's when you uh, get the hooks ping out. Just about got time for one more cast. Can't say I haven't had a bit of action. I must have hooked one, two, three, a little four. I've missed about three others. More than that, I think. That's about eight and got four or something like that. Well, it's all gone quiet now. I'm on the seafood on the left two roach uh, out there, straight out, one slightly right, one straight out. So I'm down to the last five minutes guys, look, it is what it is, it's a short trip, you've got to catch them at the right time, they weren't going nuts but it probably appears that way on the camera but trust me, what it normally fishes like, and as the bailiff said it's you know, been a bit slower, but <laughs> I'm still had, I must have had eight, eight takes, Two I've got, two pinged out, there's four fish, there's four solid hookups. So it's like eight takes, four fish, can't really grumble about it, can you? Just for an evening's fishing. And look, it's only quarter to nine or something like that. But I don't think they go all night. Not that you can't fish all night, anyway, I'm just saying, I don't think they feed all night. Um, so I'm going to call it quits. Guys, while I pack all this gear up, I'm going to start packing up in about five minutes time. You guys go back to the Totally Awesome office. I'll see you there, and we'll go through some other stuff as well. I'm sure I'll find something. But, happy with what I got, really. I wanted, you know, a nice one, really, but that's the way it goes. It's fishing. So, back in the totally awesome office again. Well, you guys wanted to know, in the last theory time and tackle repair section I did, in a previous film last week, I was gluing this reel handle. Yeah, you can't really see which one was broken. Only just there, it's very slightly turned in, but the knob actually turns on the top. That's the good side. That's allegedly the bad side. That's gonna do me for a while. I've bound over more tape over it. And don't forget that piece of wire is in there to hold it together. If it breaks again, I'll repair it again. So that looks like something of a success because I'm not hugely grinding pressure on it. I'm pulling up, or you should do, pull up and wind the slack down under less pressure. That's how you should do it. Happy days. I don't even have to tell Mike that I broke it. Now, what else are we going to be using today? What about something a little bit different, something to do with photography? It, it's going to be an experiment, it's going to con concern a fan, a roll of carpet, double-sided carpet tape, a kitchen scourer, and Mike's old busted kicked about 
well, GoPro 7, GoPro 8, I don't really use a 7. Now, some of you will know, no doubt, I don't really want to upgrade all my camera equipment for what I do, it, it does the job. But, I used to have on the old GoPro 3, for years, a little umbilical cord with a radio, uh, not a radio mic, God forbid I can't afford one of those, one of those little fluffy mics. So it's a lead, only a two metre long, and do you know what, it was really, really good. I'll show you what I mean. So there's the old GoPro 8 Black, which I recently fell on and cracked the back of the screen. But Mike gave it to me because he bashed it up as well. So you had a lead, you used to plug it in, and it's a little, what they call a wind muff there. Can you see it? So the microphone's underneath it. And it did me for ages, but I can't seem to get it adapted to this one. On the other hand, the bigger camera we used to use, this one, has a serious wind muff on it, doesn't it? So you can see this breaks down the wind coming through the microphone, so you don't get all that Now, obviously we've got software here, whereby you can reduce the wind noise, but if you're talking and you reduce the wind noise, you also reduce the voice noise. You reduce the voice noise as well. So I looked online at the different things you can get. There's, there's like foam surrounds that uh, you can get around these that cover up the microphone. There's some things called dead cats, which are basically a little tapey thing like this, much, much smaller than that, like a disc that goes over the microphone. And I got looking about it, and, and I did see somebody else mention, just use any foam. So, I got a dry one, a new one, not a wet one. The other people put lots of tape and sort of covered it right round. But apparently this GoPro, this is this one here is the 8, eight Black, I think. It's got a microphone uh, receptor here. It's got one which I didn't know about underneath there. And this one of these tiny little holes at the side. So I'm thinking, why do I need a load of foam around there? The problem with that type of um, uh, dead cat, as they call them, a big wind muff, is it can come into the lens. The other small dead cats, tiny little discs go over there. They are apparently better than nothing, obviously. Um, and people that use them on sports bikes and stuff like that. They're the, they're the same problem as me outdoors, especially if I'm outdoors on a boat. You're outdoors, the air's moving, it's windy. <laughs> Depending whether you're into the wind, sideways to the wind. So I'm figuring, some people super glued them. I thought, ooh, ooh, super glue's fairly permanent. I'm reckoning a tiny weeny piece of double-sided carpet tape just tacked either side of that microphone there might just do that. Underneath, I can cut a semicircle under there and maybe put it in with a piece of tape over that without covering this one. That one's a weird, it doesn't even look like a speaker port or anything like that. So I'm not sure what that is, but they do say that it's a third microphone, I think, uh, in there. I'm going to test them in the wind, which I've seen done before, and we'll do a talk with the wind blowing into it and, and without, you know, with these fitted and see if it makes any difference at all. And, hopefully improve the audio quality. Now obviously I've got to put the other camera, which also suffers from directional mic issues in wind, has no wind muff, further back, otherwise that's going to pick this up and it will destroy the effect. So, let's switch on. Bit of mind, the microphone's here, underneath it to the side, so I'm sliding to the side. So I put the camera there, I'm going to be talking at a standard loud, standard loud, standard average, I think it's average. I tend to want to talk a bit louder because the camera's over there. I should be talking here. Here I am. I've got a carp at the end of the line. I'm just showing fighting a fish. Oh dear, as I turn the camera around, the wind comes on. Oh my God, it's windy. You can see what the sound is like. There's it's a wind. It's windy. Now I need to know how my voice is in relation to the wind because it can be different whether it's pointing into the wind or to the side of the wind. I have noticed it. this. If you turn it to one side, it might be slightly different on the, uh, the wind noise. If you turn it facing, you probably hear some wind noise. If I turn it sideways, you probably hear the wind noise. So there, allegedly, there's a tiny hole there. I don't know what that one does there. Then here, there's some sort of for microphones. There's the main one. Can you see that? 
just, let's blur it out, just there there's one and I didn't even know there was one under there. So of course this does fold down, if I put a piece of foam in it it doesn't fold down but I don't think that's a big problem do you? I don't think it's a big problem. So let's see if we can cut a D section for that, probably take that one first and then one across here but I might carry the strip along and possibly over there but without covering my um, button there. Life is one big experiment. So I'm looking for just taking the top off of this. I don't even think the wife will know I've pinched some of the foam. So that's more than enough. I'm going to take that right off there. That's good. And then the first one will be in there. We can sort of guesstimate it, can't you really? Get yourself a very nice pair of, well I've pinched the wife's best scissors. Now I have no idea how thick this foam should be, absolutely none whatsoever. I mean that fits in there pretty snug, I think I can afford to take that almost in half. Like that. The static in my fingers is going to make it go everywhere. Let's just have a look. A little bit more trimming. Right, I think that one is almost ready for taping. Somebody's going to think that's a biting arm. Now, where would I put the tape? just on the base of the hinge around the edge. I need tiny pieces of this tape and I can tell you now it can be a right fiddle having laid plenty of carpets to actually find, find the edge. I'm going to leave it on. That's better I think, I think. And then just snip that corner off there. Push that in and I believe that piece of foam, and this is not permanent, I can, I can peel this out you see, that's the thing. Possibly that might fold down like that and even hold it. Right, let's cut a strip to go across here and over that hole which will be underneath the lens but just over the top there, so not too long at all. And then I can put a bit of tape over the outside. Right. Bear with me while I get this end of this carpet tape off again. It's going to go over there, push down, then it's going to come over the top of that one, but I need to be just shy of that button. Do you can see that there? So I can bend this around and just put sellotape on the top there, or even go, as they, I've seen them do before, all the way around with a piece of tape. Let's try that. I'm going to put a taper on this, if I can both sides. What a fiddle. And the static makes it stick to everything. Push it down hard. I've got a little bit of a little bit of tape excess there. I'm trying to ease it off, cut it off. I've got some black electrical tape I could go around there and I think that's what I'm going to do right around it. The reason being if I want to put that underwater my concern is the white will spook any fish because I know they spook with the red light that they see that flashing. I've seen that many times before. 
but also you've got to watch, I might have to cut several of these up. So they've got the spare, so it's been under water, I certainly don't want to leave it there soaking wet, do I? Peel it, I don't want to peel it off. I'll get some black tape. I'm going to lose a bit of the monitor screen at the back if I tape it all the way around, but I do feel, I think somebody said that's a drain port, that, that, that piece there, so I'm going to start. Look, what you have to watch is this side is where the battery compartment uh, and you get your your card out of. So I'll probably just come straight over the GoPro signage there. I'd be quite happy if I just got one film out of this, you know, no wind noise. I'll cover both ports, going across a bit of the screen. And back to the port there. I'm not going to stretch it, I'm going to cut it so it's round. I'm, the one thing I'm hoping is I'm going to be able to see, I hadn't thought of this, what the um, screen pages come up as. Let's try it. Right here. Ah, there's my problem. I've got to cut out a little recess here. So I can just see the bottom of the screen there. One snip there. Run it along to the end of the screen and up there. That's better. Now I told you I'm learning as I'm going along. So I've basically, I've gone down, cut out so that I can get, scroll up and down, tap to unlock and I can get down and do whatever I want there. I can see what else is going on there. See that now? I've cut down the edge. I think it's as neat as I'm going to get. All it remains now is yes, test it. I suppose I would be talking and getting wind about that strength of wind because this is accelerated now. Yeah, about there. Anyway, we'll give it a try, guys. See what it comes out like. And then, of course, next best thing is try it on a fishing trip. Hopefully it's working at the moment now. So folks, I think I'm going to take a gamble, having done the little windy GoPro. Um, and I'm going to try it on that camera there and see if I can't stick a little piece of uh, the scouring cleaning foam onto that. I'm not using the scouring bit, by the way, just the foam on the back, dry foam on the back. We'll give that a go as well. I'm guessing here, is this the speakers? The two speakers on the top of the other one, in which case I could put a band of foam, you know, over the top, either two individual pieces, and the tape would stick there. I think I'm going to try it, guys. That looks like speakers to me. And I guess well, there doesn't appear to be any underneath. I might as well try it. Well, I put some tape and I've crushed it down there. So we'll put this back. Because the outside lens has to move there, you see. So it's got the other one done, so it's both cameras done. I won't know until I actually run through the clips on this one uh, to see if there's any difference in the sound level. Who knows, but the computer will tell us because it's got a little needle that dies up and down every time you talk or hear sounds. Right, see what else we can find. There's more stuff somewhere. Well, I'm out walking with the wife. We see something in the corner by a tree. Oh, somebody left some litter there? No, I said that's a bird wing. When we go scroll around the other side of the tree, there's this really decent sized, big wingspan of a bird that is no longer. It is an ex-bird, as they say. I believe it might be an owl. I'm not sure. The head has been demolished. Now, whether it's flown into something, whether a buzzard would have nailed it, but surely the buzzard would have gone off with the rest of the body, or has he just killed himself, hit the ground, and then the rats have eaten it, chewed the head off? I don't know. So it's unidentifiable from the neck up. If it, well, sounds like me. <laughs> unidentifiable from the neck up. What do you people out there think it is? Beautiful plumage on it. Beautiful plumage? Oh, it's a Norwegian blue. It's actually a Norwegian white stroke brown. But I think, is it a barn owl? I'm not sure. Tawny is a sort of browny colour, speckled, I don't know, that's why it's called tawny, I'm guessing. So I'm figuring it's a bar now, wait for this, I put one up on Facebook, might have been last year, 
not a million miles away from where this was. So why are these owls, as they say, dropping out of the sky? Does anybody know? Because it appears all of nature is under some sort of external unknown pressure. Theory time. Let us know in the comments page what you think this bird is.